All right, team, welcome uh, to another session on um, uh, software testing and automation. And this specific session is to focus and give you a quick introduction to the world of automation testing. Most importantly, what I want to show you in the next 5-10 minutes here is uh, to what are the basic foundations that one need to understand when it comes to automation testing. So in this topic, what we will look at are uh, these following points. What is automation? What is the true meaning of it? Why is it important in software testing? Uh, what does one expect when it uh, comes to an automation project or an automation job, be it QTP or Selenium and so on? And how should one approach uh, in the real world towards automation? So I'm going to take about 5-10 minutes to walk you through these concepts and I will try and use just a white uh, background to show you what it is. So primarily automation is all about taking a process that is working fine manually and then seeing how we could improve it on various aspects. All right. So what is the most important aspect in this team, if I can emphasize, it is to take a manual process, number one. There is something that is working fine in a manual environment. In the sense, there is a human uh, involved into executing a certain activity and that is working fine. But what happens with the manual effort? It is number one, human intense. So we need a human workforce to be present every time that it needs to be executed, right? Second, it can have issues or errors as we execute things in the sense that manual errors can occur wherever there is a human involved into it, correct? So there are chances that we could do some mistakes. Third is that Every time I need to repeat something, I have an issue that I have to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. So there is no need to think through it. It is just doing the same thing every day. So that is predominantly the challenge. But do note this. If something is not working correctly in a manual environment, then trying to automate is not the right thing. First, it should be working in the manual environment. So what does that mean? If the automation testing is an initiative, that should be done over a manual testing initiative. It is not independent. It is something that will add value to it. So for example, very simple. You can always walk from home to work. Let's say you're just a mile apart. But then you realize that there's too much traffic, lights in between, you're still spending at least 15-20 minutes walking and then you decide that, hey, let me buy a bike. That bike is a tool that is automating or helping you do that manual process. Team. All right. So there's a human involvement. You need someone to be sitting there uh, and watching it. It is prone to errors and it is not really reusable. Okay. So when you're working in the world of automation, what you need to really do is think from three angles. One is efficiency. There is an increase in efficiency. So what a manual process takes, let's say an hour to do, you have an automation tool that will do. And what is an automation tool? We'll look into uh, those as we go along. But you have an automation tool that takes to do the same thing in uh, much lesser time. Okay, so there is an increase in the efficiency. Then the next thing is the increase in the reusability. So I could take the same thing over and over again and uh, take the benefit out of it. All right. The last thing is accuracy. These are the most important things, team. Okay, so and I call this call these as ER, and I think this is the most important building blocks for any automation. So look at anything that is there, whatever you use in your manual life, in your real life, and what systems, tools, applications that you've used to automate, they have to meet each and everything in these. If it is not efficient, 
if it is not reusable, if it is not accurate, there is no point in taking something that is working perfectly fine and automating it. So that is the reason people want to automate. Very simple. Uh, let's say that we are talking about uh, the cycle, right? The bike that you purchased to commute and cut your time. So your efficiency has improved. The earlier commute used to take 15 minutes. Now it is taking you 4 minutes. All right? Reusable. Do I need to use it once and throw it away? No, but you spent about $500 just purchasing a good bike. Why would you throw it away? So you would want to reuse it with little maintenance. Take care of it. Make sure that there's oil, there's air in the wheels and so on. Then accuracy in the sense that it still does the same thing and correctly. What is the point of doing buying a bike which just doesn't take you to work uh, or there's no way you can reach work, right? So this is the most important building blocks for automation. Now, what I showed you in this slide is the first thing. So ERA, remember these three things. What is automation? To take a manual process and convert it into something which is more efficient. You can reuse, you can be able to automate uh, and make sure that it is accurate. Very simple example in the real life. Let's say that you work for an insurance company like uh, let's say progressive.com or you work for geico.com so for example geico.com has an application where a user is able to go in and sign up or get quote right so if you want to compare and get a quote then what is the process there are multiple steps that one needs to do so think of it from a manual process a uh, few test engineers who know how the system is supposed to work will write down those test cases or what they need to be testing every time the application changes to make sure that it works correctly, right? So what do they need to do? They need to come here and select what type of insurance. Then let's say that they enter a zip code and then they click on get code. This is easy, right? So we can do this so quickly without having to do everything. But what happens next? You will start having to enter the customer information, the vehicle information, who are the drivers, any additional discounts, and then finally get a quote. To do this five, six screens, how long will it take team? About 10, 15 minutes at least, even if you have auto fields and so on. Now, just imagine to do the same thing for different sets of data. What happens if the individual is not married or is having more uh, points, uh, which is uh, traffic violations, or is living in an area where uh, the traffic incidents are more, or has a history of DUI, right? Or uh, is uh, underaged or just a young driver. So all these considerations will just throw away all your calculations of testing. When I say not throw away the calculations, but just that it is uh, a huge information, huge amount of data along with scenarios to test. So what we had as a basic, let's say five screens into 10 fields each, let's assume takes us 15 minutes, okay? But let's say that I have, so I do how many? Four per hour. But let's say if I have, uh, 40 different sets of data. That means that I will take 10 hours just to test that specific flow and every time I need to do it. So if I have a monthly release, only for those forms with only 40 sets of different data will take me 10 hours. Now you have a perfect candidate for automation. Why? You may be able to create a script and how do you know if you'll be able to automate? That is your ability, your control or command on the tool which will come later. And if this is efficient, yes, I would like to cut the time. Do we need efficiency? Yes. Can I reuse it? Yes. That is the important requirement. And is it going to be accurate? Yes. That's the other requirement. So these three requirements will really fulfill that portion. Now, if you talk about why is it important in software testing? to basically save time, to make sure that your products are more uh, defect free. Uh, what developers are trying to do is trying to write defect free code. There's still uh, slippages that are leaking of defects from one phase to the other as it goes on. Uh, 
correct? So that becomes a problem. So in this specific case, for example, uh, you make a manual error. You're supposed to click on no here, but unfortunately you clicked it on yes. You go all the way, then you realize that you made a mistake. Then you have to come back and do it. So you could avoid that accuracy or that human errors, improve efficiency with these tools. All right. Now, can the tool do it or not is something of a different scenario. Is it the right candidate for automation or not is important. All right. Now, let's talk about very briefly on these two points and then we will move on. So, what do you expect from every automation initiative? So, anything that you do, you expect something in return, correct? There is a return on your efforts. In the business world, we talk about ROI, return on investments. So, what is the return on investments? For every input that you put, you expect an output to come out. And hopefully, the output is far greater than the input you put. So, what is the point of um, doing a process that is completely loss making? In the sense, there is always a cost involved to automate things. There is cost involved to maintain scripts. There are costs for the tools also. At the end of the day, it has to be a positive return on investment and sometimes unfortunately what has happened team is many automation projects I would say six out of ten projects have never really been implemented to what ROI was shown initially so it is very important to be able to define what will be the outcome of every automation initiative before a project moves forward as we go along, we will have specific sessions on uh, the how you calculate these uh, before you get into the projects. But that should be the basic expectation from any automation initiative. Definitely ERA, but make sure that there's a positive return on investment, at least over a period of time. It is like you take something and you put it into a house. You hope that it will give you a rental value or the price goes up. Let's say the market went down, the price has fallen. But you'll hope that, you know what, at least two, three years, the rental value will start giving me some more uh, income and then you're able to pay back the loan. So that's an expectation that you set. Now, how do you approach automation real world? Similar way. But the easiest way to really do it is this. Number one, it is not usually one person thing. There is a whole team that is involved. All right. There may be a project manager or a lead. And then you may have the entire QA team and portion of this entire QA team is focused on automation. All right. Not necessarily that the entire team is. So you will want to focus to make sure that your leads or your managers are able to achieve the positive return on investment through building one block at a time. All right. The most important challenge that the industry faces in automation is unable to complete or deploy anything that is related with automation. So even if you do not know complex frameworks or advanced scripts, that is fun. Record simple scripts, 10 scripts for this process and keep it ready. That is it. Stage two, then you say, you know what, we will do a simple data driven framework. Stage three, you know what, we will do some more advanced programming using descriptive programming. Stage four, you'll say, we will do keyword driven framework. And you set a timeline for this. So you start with basic records so that someone is seeing, okay, it is going in the positive direction. Because by the time you reach here, it could be one year, it could be two years, you don't know. Or it could be six months if you really have a good team. So in the meanwhile, there, the management is only seeing that there are three, four people working and they're not seeing any results. So start showing results, gradually increase the complexity to which you take. And that is very important when you go through it. Now, each of these topics is very, very vast by itself. It's a whole uh, uh, module that you could talk about. So as we go more advanced in the later topics, you will see uh, more on it. But these are the fundamental building blocks. Because whatever you learn next is all dependent on these specific items. All right. Now, thank you all. Uh, let's move on to the next topic.
Now, in the meanwhile team, if there is anything that you have as a specific question, what I would do is keep it ready in the chat. I will answer each question so that uh, you could take uh, one question at a time. I could put it in the, uh, as an answer towards the end of the session. Have your questions ready. I will take it as we get to it. Let's move on with the schedule. We complete the next one and then uh, we'll see what next, okay?